been learning a lot of things about shapes and their properties. And today, we're going to be taking the next step as we learn about perimeter. Perimeter is the distance around the outside of a polygon. The perimeter of this garden, for example, is the distance around the outside, indicated by the blue arrows. It's sort of like thinking if there were a fence going all the way around the garden, the total distance of the fence would be the perimeter. The perimeter of a polygon, then, would be the total length of its sides. In this example, if we were to think of this side of the triangle as distance B, this side as distance C, and finally this as distance A, we would find the perimeter by adding A plus B plus C to find the total perimeter or the outside distance of this triangle. Another thing, a study tip that helps me, is thinking that the word rim is in perimeter. You can see that here. The reason why associating rim with perimeter helps me remember that the perimeter is the outside distance is because I think of the rim of a drinking glass. I think of the outside edge of the drinking glass that I bring to my mouth when I take a sip of my drink. And that helps me remember that perimeter is the outside distance of a polygon. In this example, we're looking at a rectangle that has a length of 8 centimeters and a width of 3 centimeters. How would we find the perimeter of this object? Well, if I remind myself that perimeter is the outside distance all the way around this rectangle, I could then use the information given to us to think that the perimeter in this example would be 8 centimeters plus 8 centimeters plus 3 centimeters plus 3 centimeters. In order to do that math, you might choose to set up a column addition problem, like 8 plus 8 plus 3 plus 3. And like always, Mrs. Taglia likes to chunk. I know that 8 plus 8 equals 16. 3 plus 3 equals 6. So the total perimeter now is broken down to a mental math problem of 16 plus 6, which we know equals 22 centimeters. So in this example, the perimeter is 22 centimeters. Let's look at another example of finding perimeter. We are looking at a square with each side measuring 2 inches. Because a square is a polygon of four equal sides. We know that if this side has a length of two inches, every other side would also have a length of two inches. Using what we know about perimeter, I would ask myself, how would I set up a number sentence to figure out the total outside distance of this object? We would do that first, perhaps, by thinking of the addition sentence 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. If I skip count by 2's, 2, 4, 6, 8, I could come up with our answer that the perimeter of this object equals 8 inches. But when you look at this number sentence, some of you might be inspired to connect it with an activity we did in class. When we used unit cubes to represent 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. You might remember that a repeated addition problem like this can also be represented using multiplication. In this example, we have the number 2 four times. The multiplication sentence that can represent this same repeated addition problem would be 2 times 4, because I have 2 4 times. And 2 times 4 equals 8. These are two ways of getting the same answer to our perimeter question. The perimeter of this square is 8 inches, and I could find that doing 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, or by using multiplication, 2 times 8. This is another triangle example, but this triangle has distances of 
5 centimeters, 7 centimeters, and 11 centimeters. Like always, we know that perimeter is the total distance around the outside of the object, so we can find it by adding 5 plus 7 plus 11. You might want to chunk 5 plus 7 equals 12 so that you're left with a more simple mental math problem of 12 plus 11. 12 plus 11, we know, equals 23. So we would say that the perimeter of this triangle equals 23 centimeters. Here comes another perimeter example. This time, it's an equilateral triangle with each side measuring four inches. We start by asking ourselves, how do I find perimeter? Well, we know that we need to combine the outside edge of the figure. And to do that, you might have used the addition sentence four plus four plus four. If we skip count, four plus four is eight, plus four more is 12, we would find that the perimeter of this figure is 12 inches. But some of you may have considered representing this idea using multiplication. To find perimeter, you notice that we used repeated addition. We have the number 4 three times. This same idea can be represented using multiplication by thinking about it as 4 times 3. We have the number 4 three times. And 4 times 3 gives us the same answer, perimeter of 12 inches. Whether you use repeated addition or multiplication, those are both excellent operations and strategies to use to find the perimeter of this equilateral triangle. Here's an example of another regular polygon, but this time we're looking at a pentagon. This is an example of a pentagon with sides measuring three inches. When I set up my number sentence to find the perimeter of this object, I would have to add three plus three plus three plus three plus three. Notice that I have the number three five times. To figure out this repeated addition number sentence, you might skip count three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen to find a perimeter of fifteen inches. You may have also chosen to think of it as a multiplication sentence. Let's pause here for a moment. Can you think of how we might represent three plus three plus three plus three plus three using multiplication? Let's see. If you said three times five, you got it. Because we have the number three five times, we could use multiplication to find the perimeter of this pentagon by using the number sentence three times five. Three times five equals 15. So this is another way of finding the perimeter of this pentagon is 15 inches. Either way, with repeated addition or multiplication, we find the same correct answer, perimeter of 15 inches. This one is a little bit different because in the words, they explain the distance of each side of this hexagon. They tell us that the perimeter of this hexagon can be found if we know that each side measures 8 meters. This time, it's up to us to realize that this side is 8 meters, this side is 8 meters, all the way around our hexagon until we've labeled all six sides of the hexagon. This visually shows us that each side measures 8 meters. Now, how would we use this information to find the perimeter? One way would be to add 8 plus 8, plus 8, plus 8, plus 8, plus 8, six times. And here we have it represented in the number sentence. As you can see, these number sentences, as your figure 
gets bigger and bigger. This time we have a figure with six sides. We have more and more add-ins to our addition sentence. It's getting pretty long to manage. We could use skip counting to find the total perimeter by counting 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48 to find that the total perimeter is 48 meters. But perhaps a number sentence that might be more easy to manage would use multiplication. Think, what multiplication sentence might I use to represent this repeated addition example? If you said 8 times 6, you got it. This is another way of finding that the total perimeter of this object equals 48 meters. So once again, whether you use repeated addition or multiplication, these are both great ways to find the perimeter of this hexagon. I hope that these examples made it more obvious to you how repeated addition and multiplication can be used to find perimeter. On tonight's homework, I encourage you first to do the sample problems, and then notice on your sheet that Mrs. Tagley has given you the opportunity to create a problem of your own. When you create your problem, make sure that it's a question about perimeter. Bring it to class tomorrow, and we will use the questions that we've created to spark some good, juicy discussions about perimeter in class.